Hi boys and girls. We're back today. It's Miss Rasho and we're reading The Wild Robot. We're going to pick up with chapter seven today. Chapter seven, The Wilderness. Animal sounds filled the forest, chirps and wing beats and rustlings in the underbrush. And then from the sea cliffs, there came new sounds. Heavy crunching footsteps, the forest animals fell silent. And from their hiding places, they watched as a sparkling monster stomped past. But the forest was not a comfortable place for Roz. Jagged rocks and fallen trees and tangled underbrush made it difficult for her to walk. She stumbled along, struggling to keep her balance until her foot snagged and she toppled over like a piece of timber. It wasn't a bad fall, no dings, no dents, just dirt. But Roz was programmed to keep herself in good working order. And once she was back on her feet, she immediately began cleaning herself off. Her hands darted around her body, quickly brushing and picking off every speck of dirt. Only when the robot was sparkling again did she continue through the forest. Roz stumbled on until she found a patch of ground that was flat and open and carpeted with pine needles. It seemed like a safe place and safety was all the robot really wanted. So she stood there motionless. All perfect lines and angles set against the irregular shapes of the wilderness. Chapter eight, the pine cones. If you stand in a forest long enough, eventually something will fall on you. And Roz had been standing in the forest long enough. A gentle wind whispered through the treetops and then thunk, a pine cone bounced off her head. The robot looked down and watched the pine cone roll to a stop. It seemed harmless. So Roz went right back to do nothing. A few hours later, a gust of wind rushed through the treetops and then, thunk, a robot looked down as another pine cone rolled away. And then a few hours after that, a howling wind tore through the treetops. It bent trunks and shook branches. And then, thunk, 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 pine cones began, pine cones began raining down. Thunk, thunk, Roz felt something like annoyance. Thunk she quickly scanned the area for somewhere safe from the pine cones, from pine cones. And she spotted the perfect place when she looked up at the huge rocky shape that towered above the forest. Chapter nine, the mountain. Roz was now stomping her way up the mountain. Dense forests and rocky outcrops forced the robot to zig and zag and backtrack. But after an hour of steady hiking, she arrived at the cracky, craggy mountain peak. Grasses and flowers and shrubs sprouted from every pocket of soil, but there were no trees at the top. Roz was safe from those annoying pine cones. She dusted herself off and then carefully climbed up a leaning slab of stone at the very highest point of the mount entire mountain. The robot slowly turned her head completely around. She saw the ocean stretching to the horizon in every direction. And in that moment, Roz learned what you and I have known since the beginning of this story. And in that moment, Roz finally realized that she was on an island. Roz looked down and surveyed the island. Starting from the sandy southern point, the island grew wider and greener and hillier until it finally jutted up into the rocky cone of the mountain. In some places, the mountain fell away, leaving sheer cliffs. A waterfall rushed off one cliff and fed a river that wound its way through a great meadow in the center of the island. The river flowed past wildflowers and ponds and boulders and then disappeared into the forest. 
blurry shapes suddenly cut through the robot's vision. She refocused her eyes and saw vultures circling above the foothills. Then she noticed lizards warming themselves on a distant rock. A badger peeked out from a berry bush. A moose waded through a stream. A flock of sparrows turned in perfect unison above the trees. The island was teeming with life, and now it had a new kind of life, a strange kind of life, artificial life. Chapter 10, The Reminder. I should remind you, reader, that Ross had no idea how she had come to be on that island. She didn't know that she'd been built in a factory and then stored in a warehouse before crossing the ocean on a cargo ship. She didn't know that a hurricane had sunk the ship and left her crate floating on the waves for days until it finally washed ashore. She didn't know that she'd been accidentally activated by those curious sea otters. As the robot looked out at the island, it never occurred to her that she might not belong there. As far as Roz knew, she was home. Chapter 11, The Robot Sleeps. Roz stood on the peak and watched the sun sink behind the ocean. She watched shadows slowly spread over the island and up the mountainside. She watched the stars come out one by one until the sky was filled with a million points of light. It was the first night of the robot's life. She activated her headlights and suddenly bright shafts of light were beaming out from her eyes and illuminating the whole mountaintop. Too bright. So she dimmed them. Then she turned them off and sat in darkness and listened to the chorus of nighttime chirps. After a while, our robot's computer brain decided it was a good time to conserve energy. So she sat and anchored her hands to the rocks. Her non-essential programs switched off and then in her own way, the robot slept. Chapter 12 the storm. Roz felt safe up on the mountaintop, so she spent the next few days and nights perched on the peak. But everything changed one afternoon when a low flying cloud crept up the mountain and Roz found herself surrounded by white. When the world faded back into view, she noticed more clouds floating south past the island. Then she heard a deep rumble behind her. The robot turned her head around and saw that the sky was filled with a swirling wall of darkness. Light flickered here and there, more deep rumbles. A storm was approaching, and it wasn't just any storm. It was as fierce as the one that had sent the cargo ship to the ocean floor. The wind picked up. The first drops of rain tapped against the robot. It was time to go. Roz un unclamped her hands and began sliding down the peak. Her spark, hot sparks flew from her body, from where her body scraped against the leaning of st slab of snow. As soon as her feet hit the soil, she was off and running. The wind fell harder. The rain fell harder. The wind blew faster. The lightning flashed brighter. The thunder cracked louder. So much rainwater was falling that rushing rivers of runoff started springing up everywhere. Ross splashed down the mountain, searching through the gloom for any kind of shelter. But she should have watched where she was going. Her heavy feet slipped and tripped, and she tumbled right into a mudslide. Our robot was helpless. The river of mud whisked her downhill, slamming her into rocks and dragging her through bushes and sweeping her straight toward a cliff. Mud was pouring off the cliff like a waterfall. Roz frantically claw clawed at the ground, grasping for anything she could hold on to, but the flow only carried her faster toward the edge. And just as she was about to plunge over the side, she came to a hard, sudden stop. Mud surged around her, spraying into her face and pinning her against some solid thing. She blindly felt with her hands and recognized the thick roots and trunk of a pine tree. In an instant, she was pulling herself up into the branches. 
The wind whipped across the mountainside and Roz heard the familiar thunk of pine cones pelting her body. But she didn't mind them. She was just happy to be safe from the mud flow. The robot locked her arms and legs around the tree and waited for the storm to blow over. And that's the end of chapter 12. Next time we'll pick up on chapter 13.